all students going through this stage of their lives, knowing that what they do now is set the foundation for their future, it can be a very stressful time because you're getting pressure from your parents, from educators, from society, from your peers. So you talked about you know, dealing with stress. And I think when we talk about education, we need to think about how we can build the character of our students yes. so that they become strong enough to, among other things, handle stress, handle failures. We need to also inculcate in them the right values. Yes. How much emphasis are we giving to values and character building in schools? I've met many parents who want us to place an even stronger emphasis on values and character education. And many parents recall fondly their days when they had textbooks like The Good Citizen or The Hao Kong Ming. <laughs> <laughs> they even remember particular chapters of it mm. and what they learned from there. And indeed, our students are much more exposed uh, to ideas around the world. They are exposed to different lifestyle. Our society is changing. And I'm glad that our parents want to place a stronger emphasis on values, education and on character development. So we are doing it in a number of ways. Uh, first is to ensure that the teaching of values is infused across everything we do in subjects like mother tongue languages, for which we have a very strong emphasis on the teaching of values. And one important aspect of that is our co-curricular activities. In our co-curricular activities, students learn to interact with one another, they learn about teamwork, they learn about resilience. Uh, particularly when they compete, they learn about fair play, they learn about success and failure. And that if they fail, they need to bounce back and be resilient. Now, the second area is a more specific focus on character and citizenship education. We have three key themes which is about identity, relationship and choices. How do we help our students to build a sense of identity? How do we help them build relationships with other people, learn to respect people and learn to interact with others? And third, how to make good choices, responsible choices. One important feature of that is the Values in Action program, where it is about learning, doing and reflecting. So they learn about the needs of the community around them, the needs of people around them, to serve in elderly home, to help children with special needs. Then when they finish the program, they reflect on what are the important values that they have learned, what are the important lessons that they have learned. And finally, I think parents play a most critical role. Parents are our child's first and most important teacher. So we have to work very closely with our parents and parents need to take the lead in this. I'm happy to say that many parents have been very supportive is there a universal set of values? Because we talk about them as if it's all understood what they are. Do you have emphasis on some particular values that we feel should be upheld? If you look at the history of Singapore over the last 50 years and the values which our pioneers have shown, I would say that the ones that stood out for me would be responsibility, resilience and resourcefulness. Going forward, I think what is going to be very important that we must continue to emphasise is integrity that we need to ensure integrity in our society so that we remain corruption-free and that Singaporeans are trustworthy people. We need to emphasise the care and concern for others so that we can build a kind and gracious society. And finally, I think we need to place a strong emphasis on respect. Respect for everyone, regardless of race, language or religion, or the jobs that you hold. So in that way, we can continue to maintain that harmony. And those are very important aspects of how we maintain harmony in our society and how we keep our society multiracial, multireligious. OK, now for my final question, I'm hoping to hear from every single one of you. Moving forward, what do you hope that the Singapore education can achieve? We have a good education system. What I would like to see, a tone down of the stress that would comfort parents, students and teachers. I'd like to see the education system do for the next generation what it did for my generation. That's to move up the curve, get more up the uh, ladder. The system will change, but it will nevertheless accommodate the needs of the future. We have come a long way. We are all products of the education system in the last 50 years. What I like the young ones today to have is confidence. I think a lot of the young learners today, they lack confidence. So I always feel that if I can impart to the young ones that come and work for me, I say, believe in your dreams. Don't live other people's dreams. Believe in your talent. That self-belief is very important. 
a mindset change amongst people onto those who are more academically inclined, those who go into GEP and those who are in non-technical stream to close in that gap and think that every child can succeed, whether it's in school or whether in the future in the workplace. I hope for the education system to find a little bit more soul or more personality. I wish that they would find ways to connect more of their students. I think it's very important because we are all made up of heart and soul and people can achieve amazing things if you push them the right way and you can only find that way if you get to know them. Yeah. So I think what everyone's been discussing is a goal, right? Whether it's confidence or soul or to see improvement. And I think the policies laid out are towards achieving those goals. So for me, what I'm interested in is to see what is the first small step I would like to see that translated in the facilitators, the teachers, the staff, the parents, who are that conduit from the policies and the goals and transferring that to the children and linking it back vice versa. We help every child find his interest and strength and passion. And in that way, they can continue to keep learning all their life, that we are able to plant the seeds of lifelong learning in them and to develop the confidence in them that everyone can learn and can succeed. My model of a lifelong learner is Mr. Lee Kuan Yew. I have the privilege of working with him for a few years. He's a model of lifelong learning for many reasons. One is that at his age, he was learning the computer, he was reading up on global affairs and even on very difficult subjects, technical subjects about the Asian financial crisis. He went deep into the details and I learned a lot from him. And he used this learning in the service of the nation. He dedicated his entire life to building Singapore, and that is most inspiring. That unwavering dedication and lifelong dedication to Singapore. I think we can safely say that our education system so far has been pretty OK. Well, there's always room for improvement, right? That's just for Singaporean speaking. But I think the point has also been made here that we need to go beyond grace. We need to stop obsessing over grace. And Leland was looking for that one small step change that we can make. And the minister gave that step. It's and about mindset change. The one small step actually also helps in mindset change because then we no longer stress about this big thing we have to do. We just have to like, okay, this is a little footprint I can make. And then exactly. the next one. And all of us have a different role to play. I mean, as educators, as a parent, as an employer, as a teacher, as a student, mm -hmm. and how we can encourage that diversity, that embrace a range of passions and talents and abilities. So you have a role to play in contributing to that collective consciousness and that mindset about education. We have been talking about it a lot. We have been thinking about it a lot. We can do something about it. So thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Lina. Thank you. Great thank you job. So We are all products of the education system, so we have a lot to be thankful for. You're educating the, the future of Singapore, and if we want them to move a certain way, then we have to start now. The interaction was very, very exciting, very vibrant, I must say. I found it very valuable when we shared our opinions about what the current system is and what we hope that it will be. Uh, really in line with very progressive approach to education and very good vibes of the future because of that. It's really nice to see that at that level, they're coming to the ordinary civilian and saying, hey, we have you in mind. We're thinking of you. We're thinking of your children. We're thinking of our future. So relax and we feel for you.